welcome to week seven of the NFL Contest Show. I'm your host, Jesse Flynn. Well, week six, it finally happened. A negative week in the contest. Went two and three, and I was lucky just to get those two wins, as that Dallas Cowboys game could have certainly gone either way, and the Saints were pretty fortunate in the way they ended up scoring some of their points. The three losses that I took, those games, they, they weren't even really close. They were just bad picks on my part. I should have stuck to my original script, but I tried to go off. And, you know, I took it on the chin myself and my personal bets as well. Uh, you know, the sports books, they, they really took it on the chin this week as a lot of the favorites ended up covering this week. So it's just, you know, in an 18-week NFL season, you're going to have those type of weeks and just got to move forward Push on to week seven. The the books have put out some interesting lines this week. They're really trying to make it difficult on people to pick one side or the other. They don't want to take another week like they did last week in week six. So we're on to week seven. So let's see which five games I like for this week in the NFL contest. So the first game that I like for week seven of the NFL contest is the Kansas City Chiefs minus four and a half. Heading out to Tennessee to take on the Titans. I just like the way this sets up for Kansas City, particularly particularly their offense. I think they're going to be able to put up some points against this uh, bad Tennessee uh, defense, particularly against the pass. Uh, you know, Patrick Mahomes, I think he's had two interceptions the last five games. That's got to regress. He's not going to continue to put the ball in harm's way. I know one of the interceptions last week was a deflection off of the receiver's hands that, you know, the uh, Washington football team was able to capitalize on that tip ball. And then the other one was just a terrible, terrible decision by Patrick Mahomes. But even with all that, they were still able to put up enough points last week to end up covering the spread easily in that game. And I just think they're going to continue to score points against this Tennessee defense. And as for the Tennessee offense, I mean, it, it, it does on paper look like a good matchup against this Kansas City defense that's also been pretty bad, particularly against the run. We saw what Derrick Henry can do on Monday night. But I think that they should be able to stack the box against this defense or against this offense for Tennessee. They're supposed to, I think the uh, Kansas City Chiefs are getting Chris Jones back. So they're going to have one of their key defensive linemen back from injury that's really going to help bolster this defense and I think that what they're going to do is they're going to make Ryan Tannehill have to beat them and it looks like Julio Jones is questionable to play A.J. Brown is banged up uh, I think he's going to play but you know who knows if he'll make it through the entire game both of these guys are dealing with leg injuries and Tannehill just hasn't been you know, that great of a quarterback this year, he only has six touchdowns to four interceptions. I don't think they're going to be able to, it's not going to be a track meet like what they had uh, a Monday night against Buffalo. But they were very fortunate. They got some big plays in the running game and they got some uh, defensive uh, plays that were turned into points on short fields. So I don't know if they're going to have those same type of opportunities against Kansas City. And I just think, Tennessee is getting too much credit for that game that they won on Monday night against Buffalo, even though Buffalo outgained them in yardage. And the only reason why they lost that game is because I believe they were two for five in the red zone, and both of those were field goals. So, you know, when you're, you that game played right into Vrabel's hands, and it, you know, they were able to, to hold on and get the victory at home. I just don't see it working out that way this week against Kansas City. I like Kansas City's passing offense against this team, and I think they're going to put up enough points in this game to make Tennessee have to abandon the run and try to rely on Tannehill in that passing game, and I don't think they're up for the challenge. And with it being under a touchdown, I think that's a good enough uh, number for me. So for my first pick in Week 7, I'm going with the Kansas City Chiefs minus 4.5. So the second game I like for week seven of the NFL contest is the Indianapolis Colts plus four heading out to San Francisco to take on the 49ers. I just like the way that this game matches up for the Colts uh, and the fact that they're getting four points. 
I think the defense is going to have success against San Francisco's offense. You know, we're not even sure who the quarterback is going to be for the 49ers this week. They, uh, you know, it's pretty much, um, I'm assuming it's going to be Garoppolo, but Garoppolo is still not going to be 100%. He's basically getting out there because he doesn't want to lose his position as number one QB. And I believe Trey Lance is also injured. So, you know, he's almost being forced back into it. I think if they had more time, he probably wouldn't be playing. But even with him coming back, I don't think the 49ers offense is going to be able to move the ball uh, successfully for the whole game against this Colts defense. I believe George Kittle is still going to be out for the 49ers off, uh, offense, and they're down to like their fourth string running back. So they're, you know, as much of the running success that they've had on against other teams, this Colts defense is a, a lot better than some of these teams they've played in the in the previous weeks and I just think that it's a good matchup for the Colts defense and you're getting four points as far as the Colts offense they've been hit or miss throughout the year but they've gotten better as Carson Wentz has gotten healthier I believe the ankle injuries that he suffered earlier in the year are finally starting to get back to where he's able to move around a little bit better and he's going to need to have a little bit of that mobility going up against this 49ers defense because one thing they can do is get after the quarterback with their defensive linemen, uh, particularly like Bosa. You know, he can put pressure on the quarterback. So they're going to have to use the run game, set up some play action, not really uh, ask Carson Wentz to throw 35, 40 passes a game. I believe last week he only threw 20 passes. Uh, you know, they just leaned really heavily on their running game. And now the Colts should also have uh, Quinn Nelson back, their all-pro offensive lineman. So that's just one more piece that's in the favor of the Colts going up against this San Francisco team. And now you're giving me four points. Uh, and, and San Francisco, you know, for historically hasn't really been good against the spread at home. So I just, there's not really much of a home field advantage when it comes to playing at Levi Stadium. And it's given me more than a four, uh, more than a field goal with the Colts, with the defense that I just think is going to, they're going to have a, a, a good game against this San Francisco 49ers offense. So for my second pick for week seven, give me the Colts plus four. So the third game that I like for week seven of the NFL contest is the Carolina Panthers minus three heading out to New York to take on the Giants. Uh, Carolina Panthers, they've lost their last three. Giants are on a two-game losing streak after that big win in uh, New Orleans. I just think that this is a spot for Carolina where they're going to get back on the winning track. I can see them, you know, this offense should have success against this Giants defense. Uh, Carolina, they've, the last few weeks in their losses, They've been getting Sam Darnold hit. They've given up a lot of quarterback pressure, a lot of quarterback sacks. But the New York Giants, they don't really have that pass rushing uh, defense. They're one of the at the bottom of the league when it comes to pressuring the quarterback, getting sacks on the quarterback. And their secondary isn't really much better. They're part of the problem of why they're not able to get pressure on the quarterback. I think Carolina's wide receivers are going to have a big day this week. I believe their tight end, Tremble, should have a big week. And as long as they can protect Sam Darnold against this weak pass rush of the New York Giants, they should have no problem putting up points against this team. On the other side of the ball for the Giants offense, it looks like they're going to be down Saquon Barkley. Uh, I believe Galladay and Tony are probably unlikely to play. And not too sure about Slayton and the other wide receivers, if they're going to be back from their injuries or how well they'll be able to, you know, how long they'll be able to go. So it just doesn't look good for this New York Giants offense that they're going to have any of their big name playmakers this week. And it just sets up for the Carolina Panthers to finally get off this three game losing streak and get back into the win column. And, uh, you know, as far as like trends are concerned, San, I mean, uh, Daniel Jones, you know, has historically been bad against the spread at home. He's only 4-12, and 12, a 25% winning percentage, when he, you know, against the spread at home. So we know that home field advantage when it comes to the Giants team, as far as when he's been the quarterback, isn't really anything to consider in this game. 
I just think that the, the Carolina defense is much better than the defense of the Giants. They're going to be able to hold the Giants' offense down, and Carolina's offense should be able to have success in this game. And I see them winning this game outright, and I don't think that three points is too much to be laying even on the road. So for my third pick, give me the Carolina Panthers, minus three. So my fourth pick for week seven of the NFL contest is the L.A. Rams, minus 15 at home, taking on the Detroit Lions. Yes, I know this is a big number to be laying with this uh, L.A. Rams team. You know, in an NFL game, 15 points, it's, it's a tough number to sell. But, you know, the books got beat up pretty bad last week with all the favorites that covered. So they're really trying to protect themselves against teasers. And they're inflating some of these lines a little bit in order to try to get people to take the dog even if the favorite is going to be the right side and for me I just think that this is the right side uh, as far in the contest it's minus 15 uh, at the circa right now it's still Thursday night it's uh, now up to 16 and a half so the money is still coming in on the Rams big money money that's you know that'll move the line uh, it's still coming in on LA even at minus 15 and this is just there are just two different classes of teams right here. We've got the L.A. Rams, you know, a team that's averaging in the 30s each week in points. Uh, you know, their offense is just clicking on all cylinders. Matthew Stafford is basically putting up a sneaky MVP caliber season so far. He's only been sacked six times all year, so the offensive line is just protecting him. He's able to, to read the defenses and able to just – you know, dice them up and get the ball to all these great wide receivers that they have for L.A. And I just don't know how Detroit's defense is going to stop this Los Angeles offense. They're just, they're clicking on all cylinders, like I said. And the defense for Detroit, they've been suffering through injuries. They're young. And I don't know how much motivation they have left in them after some of these heartbreaking losses that they've had. You know, their season is pretty much already a wash. They're not making the playoffs, so they don't really have much to play for other than just making sure they put good tape out there. And, you know, I don't know how much of a motivation that will really be. Uh, you know, as far as the L.A. defense, you know, we've got Jared Goff, their former quarterback. They know this guy well. They know his weaknesses. Sean McVay knows his weaknesses. Uh, I think everybody knows his weakness is that when he gets pass rush in his face and he gets beat, you know, gets knocked around, you know, he gets gun shy. He gets, he starts staring down at the rush instead of looking at the wide receivers and he makes bad decisions with the football. And I think that's going to, what's going to happen in this game. Uh, you know, they are going to be able to put pressure on him with Aaron Donald and these defensive backs are going to be able to cover you know, these no-name wide receivers for Detroit because they're banged up on the offensive side of the ball as well. I just don't know how Detroit's going to be able to put up enough points to keep up with this L.A. offense. I think they've the most they've scored since week one is 17 points. So, you know, that's just not going to cut it against this team. And I think I actually have this as a 21-point game. I think that the Rams will win this game 38-17. to and easily cover this spread of even though it's a plus 15 points you know it's a it's definitely a hard number to wrap your head around when you see over two touchdowns but historically teams giving up 14 or more points are uh, I believe a 70 percent uh, winning percentage against the spread so even though psychologically it's hard to lay over two touchdowns with a team Historically, it's been profitable to lay two touchdowns with a favorite. So for my fourth pick, I'm taking the L.A. Rams minus 15. So my fifth pick for week seven of the NFL contest is the Philadelphia Eagles plus three heading out to Vegas to take on the Raiders. Um, you know, this is uh, as much of a fade against the Raiders after that big uh, emotional victory they had against a, 
what seems like a Denver Broncos team that was not as good as maybe they looked in those first couple of games of the year. Uh, and now you've got a Philadelphia Eagles team that's coming off an extra rest. They played a tough game against the Buccaneers on Thursday night. Their defense held that high-powered uh, Tampa Bay offense to only 28 points. And Jalen Hurts, you know, of all the well, – I still consider him a rookie quarterback because he didn't play very much last year. Of all the rookie quarterbacks, uh, you know, he's playing just as well as any of them. You know, Mac Jones and, you know, uh, Herbert, he's – I'd say he's a second-year quarterback, but still rookie quarterback. But, you know, he's – Hertz is playing at a better level each week as he gets more and more comfortable, uh, you know, in the pro game. Uh, he's able to use his mobility when he needs to, but he's also willing to push the ball downfield. And that's something you see, you know, a lot of these rookie quarterbacks, they're not really doing that. You know, like Mac Jones and uh, Tua, I'd say he's basically a rookie quarterback as well. You know, they don't throw the ball downfield. Uh, Jalen Hurts, he'll push the ball downfield. And he's starting to get into a rapport with his wide receivers. He's also getting uh, Goddard, the tight end, back this week. Uh, so that's another weapon they're going to have on offense. As well as their all-pro uh, tackle, Lane Johnson. He's coming back from his time off that he had you know, personal issues to deal with. So there's another you know, plus on the offensive side of the ball for the Eagles. Defensively, we've seen that this Eagles, you know, defense, they're they're pretty good. You know, they can hold their own. They can get pressure on the quarterback. And I just think that they're going to be able to do enough to keep this Eagles team in this game. So, you know, it, even though Vegas, they had that big win against the Broncos uh, last week, I think a lot of that was on emotion. And then a lot of it was that the Broncos aren't really as good as they were advertise early in the season and they're with the Raiders their offense particularly is really one-dimensional they have yet to really establish the run and as long as you can limit the big shot plays for uh, Las Vegas you know you've got to make them work it work the, work the ball down the field and you know a lot of times you're going to end up in either uh, not being able to convert on third downs or potentially even throwing interceptions so I just think that with a one-dimensional offense, defenses are able to predict what you're going to do and make plays and, you know, get the offense off the field. Defensively for the Raiders, uh, you know, they can get pressure on the quarterback, but their secondary is just, it's completely banged up right now. You know, they're going with, you know, second stringers, you know, at their cornerback positions all the way across the board. You know, they're just really really depleted in that area and I think Jalen Hurts in this offense is going to be able to exploit that use the play action open up some of the running or passing lanes for Jalen Hurts and be able to do enough to win this game and now you're getting three points uh, on the road I know it looks like oh you're only laying three points with the Raiders at home they should be able to cover I think that's part of the trap that uh, Vegas is setting after last week's uh, run of heavy favorites winning all their games and just, you know, really giving the sports books a kick in the nuts uh, uh, with their profits. They're really setting a lot of these lines this week as potential trap games, you could call it, where it's only laying three at home. But I actually think the Eagles are the better team in this game, and they're going to win the game outright. So for my fifth and final pick, I'm going to take the Philadelphia Eagles plus three. So those are my five picks for week seven of the NFL contest. Be sure to check in at deadmoneymedia.com to see that these are the official picks. I'll also be posting it on my Instagram at deadmoneymedia on Saturday when I officially submit my picks. Uh, if you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I hope we have a much better week than last week. Going to try to get back on the positive side. Start getting back into the contention for that $1 million first place prize. But hey, let's have a great week seven of the NFL contest. And thanks for watching.